cotton. Uh, there are cows now, cows if you leave aside a cow into, into the, for grazing, you will see that the cow will avoid the field which is BT, BT cotton, but will go into other kind of fields. Which shows even the animals have that uh, sixth sense that they know which is good or which is bad for themselves. It's the human beings which don't have any kind of a sense. They take everything rubbish, uh, for you, you can put, you know, push anything rubbish into their stomachs. Now, in the case of human beings, wherever farmers have been picking up, or whether workers have been picking up cotton in different areas of this country, we have seen farmers developing rashes on their bodies, there have been irritation, they have been facing. Now, there are evidence that in some areas of this country, children uh, living in an area where it was BT cotton and have been fed with BT cotton, uh, you know, cotton seed oil that, you know, is used as a, as a, as, as, as a cooking medium in India are now suffering from asthapha, irritation and all these kinds of bronchitis, bronchitis and so on. Now, it has happened in an area where it won't happen earlier. So now the evidence is being linked. It will take some time for us to bring out the, the scientific correlation as clearly as the world would require. But these are things happening and which should be a warning that if it can happen with a crop that was only considered to be for the farmers, what will happen when we start eating BT brinjal, BT rice or BT cauliflower or BT tomato? So far we have only one genetically modified crop in the country which is BT cotton. But now we are soon going to have BT brinjal. How concerned you are about the introduction of this particular crop? So, uh, just just one uh, point I want to raise. So far, you know, you had uh, cotton, BT cotton, which was a, which was not my concern, which are not a consumer concern. It was considered to be a concern of the farmers. But now, for the first time, we will have genetically modified food on everyone's tables. Now, that is why I think the society has to wake up. Now, it's very interesting. The BT gene that has been inserted into brinjal is supposed to kill. Uh, you know, the toxin would be produced within the fruit and then when the insect feeds on, on that particular, uh, on, on brinjal, it will die. Now, it's very interesting. If you were to keep in, in, on, in a glass pane, a glass box, one BT uh, brinjal and you will put some insects into that, you will see, you know, in, in a day or two, all those insects dying. Imagine when you eat that BT brinjal, what will happen to your body? Scientists are telling, the companies are telling us, nothing will happen to your body. After a temperature, the toxin will break down. Uh, please tell me, where in India do you have a housewife who is cooking brinjal by keeping a thermometer on her side? Secondly, why should you take in something where no benefit comes to you? So far, the pesticides was outside. So if a housewife was supposed to wash, very, we showed that you know, the residues are, are, are not there. But now the toxin is inside. Why I'm saying is this, one scientist in America has gone on record saying that the toxin that is within the BT brinjal would be 1000 times more than the toxin that is used in the BT sprays. There are certain, you know, certain biological sprays that are being used in which BT gene, BT is a bacteria as you know, that bacteria is being used for biological sprays. When you spray that on pests, on pest, the pest will die. Now, the toxicity of that vis-a-vis -vis the toxicity of that particular gene in the BT brinjal, this BT brinjal will be 1000 times more toxic than that BT spray. Please tell me, where is the urgency or desperation that human beings must eat BT brinjal? How concerned you are that the introduction of genetic engineering and genetically modified crops in the country will spell a disaster to our food security. All the kinds of disasters that you talk about, rather from, from right from Hiroshima to Chernobyl to 9-11 to, to, to 26-11, whatever you call it, will pale in front of the disaster that is awaiting us in case of food. And if we allow these companies to kind of manipulate the way they are trying to manipulate food, let me tell you, this is a disaster which society cannot comprehend, cannot even try to understand what is going to hit them and in how hard it will hit them. And I think this is where we are trying to make the society aware that let us not willingly walk into, uh, into that kind of a disaster. And when will we start, my question to you is, when will we start learning lessons from the previous or earlier disaster that the history has seen? Why not? Why don't we wake up and say that this world does not really require any more disasters? We all are fed up of disasters. If you want the terrorists to go away, please be sure there is also terrorism in food. And that terrorism should also go away. If you happen to be the Minister of Agriculture, what will you do to address the problem? Because the people often say that the population is growing and we need more food. We need to cultivate more food and that's why we need new technology. So why basically you are opposing it? 
simple ban it india does not